What's the scientific fact that creeps you out? Honestly, nothing is more creepy than how deep-sea anglerfish mate. The deep sea is dark, and the anglerfish are spread very thinly. Therefore, when an anglerfish meets another anglerfish, it's incredibly important that they get the chance to mate over and over again. The evolutionary strategy that deep sea anglerfish devised is extra creepy. The male latches onto the female, biting her and never letting go. That way, he can inseminate the eggs she drops. Not that bad so far, right? But wait, how does he eat if he's latched onto his mate? Well, the circulatory system fuses, and the female provides nutrients for the male through the fused circulatory system. The true horror starts here. The organs of the male start to wither and atrophy, being absorbed into the female. Eventually, the male is reduced to a lump of testicles the female uses to fertilize their eggs. Females are often covered in bumps of several males that have melted into the female, becoming a literal body horror lump of meat on the female. If you believe strongly enough that you have been cursed, your brain can shut itself off entirely in severe cases. The psychological term for it is voodoo death syndrome. It's just the fact you can literally think yourself to death that unsettles me so. Our brains are fascinating. If we believe strongly enough that something is real, our bodies respond accordingly. In the same vein as your example, the same phenomenon happens to women who desperately want to be pregnant. Their bellies will swell, their menstrual periods will stop, their breasts will become sore and enlarged, and they'll develop morning sickness. That so many vegetables come from the same plant. Broccoli, kale, kohlrabi, brussels sprouts, cabbage, etc. They are, botanically speaking, the same species. Humans have just bred them to emphasize different traits. Buds, leaves, tubers. Imagine if humans were genetically flexible. Imagine a person walking around with giant toes, but otherwise normal. Actually, plant genetics, in general, is a weird, weird world. Mouth pipetting was a thing in labs in the 1980s. A pipette is, for simplicity's sake, a glass straw that lab staff would use to transfer liquids. Nowadays, we use special bulbs that, when squeezed, would suck up the liquid for us. Kind of like a turkey baster or eyedropper. Before we had these bulbs, lab workers used to use their mouth to suck up the liquid, which meant if they weren't careful, they'd get whatever they were sucking up into their mouth. I'm currently training to be MLAT, and those fluids would usually be urine, liquid stool, sputum, and so on. Parasites can live anywhere inside of you, for years unnoticed. A simple migraine could be a tapeworm crawling in your brain, causing damage. Your eyes begin to blur frequently, and you don't know why, and it's not getting better. Losing weight and having diarrhea, but it's not a stomach bug. Well, I guess it is. You are having a difficult time catching your breath and your chest doesn't feel right. It could just be some parasite hanging out, using you. Top 5 Ways to Intensify Anxiety Number 1. This Post. The universe is unbelievably infinite, while simultaneously unbelievably infinitesimal. The universe has tilde 1022 stars, a rough guess. This is an unfathomably large number for humans to comprehend. But bear with me, there is roughly 100,000 million stars in our galaxy alone, and there are roughly 125 billion galaxies. A single drop of water contains tilde 1021 H2O molecules, not too far off from the number of stars in the whole universe, but contained in a single drop of water. It blows my mind that the universe can contain such mind-boggling numbers of things on such wildly different scales. There is so much to reality that the human mind just isn't capable of grasping. Years ago, I saw an episode of Monsters Inside Me, where this guy was doing something outside, and a fly flew into his eye. It only made contact for about a microsecond, but that was enough time for it to lay eggs. After they hatched, they started eating his eye from the inside, and he was starting to go blind until a doctor figured out what was wrong. Just imagine that, getting your eye eaten from the inside and losing your sight, all because a fly was briefly made contact with you. Ever since I learned about this, I get really paranoid when there is a fly around my face because of the fact that this could possibly happen to me. Any cosmological fact is actually scary. You know, we can randomly be in the path of a gamma burst, an asteroid or something else and we would never see it coming. You might just go to sleep today and in the middle of the night, scientists discover a gamma ray coming at us are gone. The universe doesn't stop there, it continues. Our existence is less than a galactic blink. The universe expands and there will be a day that our planet will be floating alone in cold darkness forever. A buddy of mine is a pilot for a major airline, in top three of the airlines. I asked him, exactly how much flying are you actually doing during a flight? Like, how much are you controlling the plane? He said, about 5%. 95% of a flight is completely automated. He said he's involved a little bit on the takeoff and on the landing, but for the most part the plane flies itself, unless something major happens in flight. Out of all of our DNA, 
only 2% codes for our genes. The 98% left over is called junk DNA. I'm not specialized in genetics, but it was long thought to be useless, but it's apparently essential for DNA expression, regulation, and protein formation. There are familial forms of Alzheimer's disease. They are very rare, but they exist. It doesn't skip a generation, and one of the form makes you have the disease as early as your late 20s or early 30s. In Auschwitz, Joseph Mangel, a Nazi doctor who conducted experiments on twins, sewed up two twins together for shits and giggles, and let them die after the surgery of infections. They apparently screamed of pain for days until dying. You can live normally, with half your brain removed. It's usually done on young children suffering from terrifying epilepsy, and the surgery is a last resort. It works quite well, and if done early enough, with re-education, the children develop normally without cognitive deficit. They just are blind in one eye, have one very weak arm slash leg, but they are not cognitively affected. Some go to college, get married, have children, and live completely normal lives. Moose have been found dead on Isle Royale killed by wood ticks. They got so infested, the moose suffer hypothermia. They're rubbing fur off against trees and blood loss from the ticks. How many ticks does it take to kill a 1,200 pound adult moose? Scientists there have found bodies with upwards of 30,000 ticks on them. Thanks. That would keep my skin crawling for days, resisting the urge to downvote this. Hated ticks well before this. We literally hallucinate reality. We don't see with our eyes, we see with our brains. Our eyes are just like cameras on the exterior of a windowless spaceship. Your brain is like the computer interpreting the information the cameras send to it. What makes it freaky is our brains omit or delete a lot of what our eyes see, because it is deemed irrelevant to the task at hand. The Dark Forest Theory, which explains we haven't met aliens yet, it comes from a great book by the author Liu Susishi named The Dark Forest. The universe is a dark forest. Every civilization is an armed hunter stalking through the trees like a ghost, gently pushing aside branches that block the path and are trying to tread without sound. Even breathing is done with care. The hunter has to be careful, because everywhere in the forest are stealthy hunters like him. If he finds other life, another hunter, an angel or a demon, a delicate infant or a tottering old man, a fairy or a demigod, there's only one thing he can do, open fire and eliminate them. In this forest, hell is other people, an eternal threat that any life that exposes its own existence will be swiftly wiped out. This is the picture of cosmic civilization. It's the explanation for the Fermi paradox. I know this isn't what the question asked, but looking up at the daytime sky with nothing from the ground in your field of vision for more than a couple seconds makes my brain start to really freak out, and I lose all sense of balance and orientation. I've been trying to do this a little bit at a time. Yes, lockdown had made things weird, but still can't get used to the feeling. Oddly enough, it feels like your feet start to lift off the ground a bit. Nighttime is also weird, but more euphoric before the panic sets in. Rabies has a 100% fatality rate after symptoms appear. The only way to survive is to get immediate medical treatment, which consisted of a temporarily suppressing set of medications and an experimental, yet rather old, vaccine. If you get bitten by any kind of animal that you can't confirm had its rabies shot, go see a doctor. Like, call an ambulance if you can't drive there right away. I don't know how much that wee-woo wagon cost. It's better than dying a sudden and terrible death by brain-consuming pathogen. Pre-ground coffee may contain ground-up cockroaches. Yes, it's sad but true. The FDA's own studies show that up to 10% of green coffee beans, and sometimes more, become infested with roaches and other insects. They are unable to process them out completely, so they just get roasted up at ground with the beans. Along with this, proteins found in cockroach feces, regurgitates, skin and body parts are potent allergens for many people, as proven when entomologists often become actually allergic to their research subjects. Therefore, most entomologists who study cockroaches become allergic to foreground coffee. The magnetic field of objects reverse at regular intervals, including our planet. Earth is overdue for this switch. And when it does happen, we don't know exactly what will happen and can't do anything to prevent it. It's very likely that there will be extreme weather events. All power stations and most technology will break and take quite a while to fix. And animals that instinctually use the magnetic fields to navigate, birds, fish, bees, turtles, and lots of others, will be so confused that they'll likely go in the wrong direction, slash get lost, slash die. 
The fact that our body's immune system doesn't recognize our eyes as part of our body, so if you get an actual infection or injury in your eye, your body will do nothing. There is also another instance of where if one eye gets injured and your body somehow has a reaction to it, it may actually go after the other eye. But the creepiest part about this is the fact that your body may actually recognize your eyes as being there, not part of the body, then begin to attack due to thinking that it's a foreign object. The reason mother's bonds is so strong with their born children is because of the hormonal onslaught that the body produces, thanks oxytocin. The baby then continues its mind-bending hypnosis into making you love it with the way it looks, giant eyes and smiles, as well as the sound of it crying being hardwired to attract the attention of the mother for feeding. So much so that a baby's cry can cause lactation in other mothers as a reflex. I'm not big into having babies, and I attribute that to the fact that their manipulation abilities freak me out so much. There is a species of spider that makes long, tunnel-like webs on the sides of trees. These webs are camouflaged with forest debris and not sticky. When insects land on the web, believing it to be just like any other tree, the spider bursts forth from within the web to drag the helpless insect inside. Because I can't choose just one, here's a list. We are more bacteria than human. We know less about the oceans than space. There is no end, beginning, center to the universe and beyond. It's just forever. You could just be a brain being experimented on to see if scientists can get a brain to believe it's alive. Happiness isn't a feeling, it's a chemical. To me, the last one isn't scary or unsettling, just kind of sad. Millions of years ago, there was a mass casualty event that drastically reduced the population of humans. This led us to having several different human species, Neanderthals, Denosivians, and what we call Homo sapiens. All three of these species interbred and amalgamated back into what we call modern humans. Before the age of colonialism, humans were well on their way towards splitting off into four subsets based on the exact same locations, with Caucasians for Neanderthals, Africans for Homo sapiens, and Asians for Denosivians. The fourth is Australian. They don't have a counterpart because Homo erectus never made it there. How many times did this happen? Anything to do with deep time. It makes me want to scream. The idea that nothing, 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 nothing is permanent. That everything decays. That even things we consider as invincible will fall to dust and that that dust will fall into less than that. The way that expansion works. The way that the cosmic light horizons work. The way that orbits will decay and that even black holes will evaporate and that maybe even fucking protons will decay. This is a short but horrifying overview of the possibilities. It genuinely troubles me to even think about that, even if we cracked anti-aging, even if we managed to upload ourselves into computers, even if we dodge every f***ing bullet and overcome every catastrophe, the clock is always ticking down. When you're subjected to a pressure wave or sudden momentum, grenade, car crash, etc., momentum really f***s you up. Part of the reason is that your skin, blood, Bones and organs are all different densities. They're all moving a little with normal processes of the body, and they get hit with slightly different bits of the force. This means that when this happens, everything moves in a different direction. That moment after an IED goes off, and a perfectly fine marine is looking for the arm he's sworn got blown off, is rearranging his internal organs to the proper configuration and recovering after his brain bounced off his skull like a hyperactive hamster, it can usually take years for all your squishy bits to fit comfortably again. Both the fact that every single one of us is under constant threat of a nuclear fallout, and the fact that nobody knows if free will exists, because either it does, or everything you do is predetermined by your genetics and other factors, making everyone effectively just a robot, a cog in the machine of society. No choice you make is your own, or even a choice to begin with. Your left brain and right brains are separate entities. In a normal person, they've connected themselves by an information highway called corpus callosum. However, for some who suffer severe epilepsy, a medical procedure can be performed to cut the information highway, and the two brains can no longer communicate with each other. These people describe it as having two personalities. For example, if the person reaches for something the other brain doesn't like, the other hand can reach over and slap it away. Apparently, after decapitation, the decapitated head remains conscious, however it is incredibly brief. This means, in theory, if you were decapitated in one good swing, you may briefly see your head falling to the ground before death. 
The thought of feeling a brief sharp pain in the neck before seeing your own head falling off your shoulders is horrifying to me. There's a weird cognitive dissonance when you have a kid, where you cannot really imagine them until they're born, and then you can't really imagine them not have existed in the past. I would have thought this was just me, but when I first visited my grandma after my first was born, she said to me, doesn't it feel like he's always been here? And it was something I was aware of, but I hadn't really processed until she said it. Now with my second, I keep having to remind myself that he hadn't even been conceived yet when I think back to my previous family events, like remembering the vacation we took the month before he was conceived. My brain keeps wanting to remember him there, and I have to remind myself that he was still a gleam in his dad's eye. But while I was pregnant with him, if he wasn't moving, I would completely forget about him and be otherwise unaware, sort of like when a family member is at work or school so you don't think about them, because you know they're safe and not your responsibility, and it would freak me out because I'd fear that I was capable of forgetting my baby. After watching that documentary on Netflix, I'm pretty sure this is entirely because of my brain being programmed upon his birth to be completely preoccupied with his well-being. That one artist guy who painted or drew portraits of himself after being diagnosed with Alzheimer's to sort of document his cognitive decline. At first you can tell he's still coherent, but the portraits are oddly flat and the angles and things are subtly wrong. The years go by and the portraits turn darker and blockier, then at the end he can't even create the semblance of a face. This was so utterly unnerving to me, like we are hardwired to recognize faces, even in places there obviously isn't one. So like when he couldn't even create the rough structure of a face at all, it was like you just knew his humanity died. He was still alive, but he wasn't anything like the person in his mind anymore. Maybe there were fragments of memory and bits of emotion, but there was nothing coherent. I can't even imagine what it would be like to die like that. He lived several more years after his last portrait. Bedford's Law of Statistics Everything that occurs naturally in the universe follows this law, or Bedford describes this, if you count the number of planets in each solar system in the universe, 30% will have a number starting with 1, 17% starting with 2, 12% starting with 3, and so on. This applied to almost anything in the universe. Number of ants in anthills, population in cities, pixels in image files, how many fucks you give each day of the year, and income reported in taxes. Now here's the kicker. If your tax report doesn't match with Bedford's law, then you have lied on your tax report. Same with pixels in an image file. If the image's pixels don't match Bedford's law, it's tampered with. It's photoshopped. Government use this law to catch tax cheaters and check voting results. Casinos use it to catch cheaters. So if anything is not following Bedford's law, it is not following nature's flow. It did not happen organically. So you still think we have free will? Think about that. All your decisions follow this law. If not, you lie or cheat. But it also applies to how many times you cheat. I'm an electrician, and I've studied electricity for four years on a college level. It's crazy to consider the fact that the most widespread and complex system that is used universally around the entire world is based on an unprovable theory. We actually don't know how electricity works. Granted, we think we do. And we do what we think it does, and it works. But at the end of the day, if you ask someone who knows what they're talking about, there's a reason why it's called electron theory and not electron law.